Hello fellow gamers, this is Boltronics and welcome to my channel. The release of Dead Island 2 is right around the corner and despite enjoying the first game and Riptide uh, quite a lot, uh, it's one of the few games coming out this month that I haven't pre-ordered and I wanted to get into why that was the case. To do that, I'm going to need to talk about my feelings with regards to pre-order bonuses and collector editions, which are usually only available via pre-ordering these days anyway. The first Dead Island game came out back in September 2011, on the 9th or on the 6th if you're in North America, and I had the collector's edition of the game pre-ordered from EB Games for PC. It cost $108, I still have the receipt, and uh, at the time I think games probably would have cost around $80 at launch, so uh, it would have cost around 35% more than usual for for the collector's edition. Now, I'm in Australia, so please keep in mind that when I'm talking dollars, I'm talking Australian dollars. So, what did we get for our 108 Australian dollars back then? Well, let's start with the contents of the game box. It contains three art cards and two DLC codes, one for Bloodbath Arena and one for the Ripper weapon. The game itself came out on a single DVD and it also came with a physical manual, something you don't see much of these days, uh, and the manual has a code on the back for product activation via Steam, and Steam support is advertised on the outside of the box. Now, I don't even know if I ever played the Bloodbath Arena DLC, as it wasn't available when I played the game at launch. Uh, the DLC code has a note on it that says that it will be available for download later and I played the game straight away. Um, I do remember using the Ripper weapon at least and thinking that was one of the better weapons in the game. So what did we get that didn't fit in the box? Well, there was a white t-shirt with the Dead Island logo uh, written on it in blood red and there was also a metal keychain which uh, you would never imagine just by looking at it that's official Dead Island merch, but uh, it is apparently. Um, well, at least it came with the game. And uh, most importantly, we also got a Turtle Beach gaming headset. And I believe the headset was a different model if the game was purchased for console. Um, again, I got the PC version. But um, I got a fair amount of use out of this headset. Um, eventually I threw it out because the headband was starting to fall apart. Um, and it would also make my head sore after a few hours of use. Now. By 2013, I was basically doing all of my PC gaming on GNU Linux under Wine. The first Dead Island game was already working perfectly under Wine by this point, so I took a chance that Dead Island Riptide would as well, and pre-ordered the Survival Edition of that, which came out on April the 23rd, 2013, and as I expected, it worked perfectly under Wine, which was uh, version 1.5.28 at the time, on day one. And now this was in the days before Steam included Proton. In fact, I don't even think the uh, there was a GNU Linux version of Steam at that time. Well, there definitely wasn't a stable one. There may have been a beta, I'm not sure. But it was definitely very early days. So um, I basically ran the whole Steam client under Wine as well. And uh, I beat the game in a few days. It ran great. I don't remember there being a single issue with the game. Now, Dead Island Riptide Survivor Edition was much cheaper this round, this time around. It was just uh, $68, and it had an R18 plus rating, which was a new rating for Australian video games at the time, having only been introduced in June 2012, uh, 10 months prior to the release of Riptide. And the Survivor Edition came with a tin box, which included the normal plastic game box, two DLC codes, one for a DLC called Fashion Victim, and another one for a DLC called the Survivor Pack. And it also came with a Survivor Notebook, a physical notebook, which, uh, as the name suggests, was literally just um, a Dead Island Riptide-themed notebook. It had... Um, blood stains on the fake leather cover and the plastic game uh, the plastic game box included the game on a single DVD and it also included the manual but the manual was much thinner than the prior 
game or the first game uh, as it only included eight pages and that also uh, a couple a few of those pages were taken up with warranty information so it was very small um, there were many other editions of this of Dead Island Riptide released around the world um, but this was the version that was released uh, in Australia I'm not aware of there having been any other versions now before we continue I'd like to take a moment to point out the, uh, the Dead Island uh, Dead Island received GNU Linux and Mac OS or OS X ports of the game in 2014. So anybody with a registered copy of the game on Steam could download these versions at no additional cost. Dead Island Riptide unfortunately never received the same treatment, just the first game. But in 2016, definitive editions of both games were released and the Steam version finally included native GNU Linux builds for both of those. So it wasn't a free upgrade to get the definitive, definitive editions, but if you had the non-definitive editions already in your Steam account, uh, you could upgrade at a reduced price. I don't remember if I took advantage of that deal. I think I might have got those games later in a Humble Bundle. I'm not too sure. Um, so Steam remains uh, to this day, the only major digital game storefront to support GNU Linux with an official client. Now, Good Old Games had promised support was coming many years ago uh, for Galaxy, uh, way back when Galaxy was first launched. They said GNU Linux support is coming soon, but they never delivered it, and they've now removed that from the website, or they did a long time ago. And I think they just hoped that everybody would forget. So if you want GNU Linux support, um, Steam is, is definitely the way to go. Um, Good Old Games does still have deb packages or some GNU Linux builds for some of their games, but hardly any these days. And they don't have that support through Galaxy. It's something you have to manage yourself manually. Now, and, and also, um, it doesn't work too well in my experience, but anyway, I won't get into that in this video. Now, there are different types of pre-order bonuses um, and in general, and I use the term bonuses lightly because you're still paying uh, by the way of by way of inflated launch pricing, unless you're buying a first party switch game, um, in which case they often give you a discount if you pre-order. I'll make an exception for, for that. But in general, if you pre-order something, you're going to be paying the maximum price of the game. And I'll also lump collector's editions into uh, these categories I'm going to discuss. So the first type um, of bonus or uh, edition that includes something collectible, um, I'll... Uh, these will typically have something like uh, art cards or art books or music boxes, snow tomes, that sort of thing. Um, so that's the first type of um, uh, bonus or uh, addition that includes something um, like uh, a pre-order type thing. Um, and then the other type of pre-order um, bonus or addition uh, that you'll typically see uh, things that are more practical. So that includes things like uh, you know, DLC, soundtracks, clothing and apparel, uh, drink bottles, controllers, gaming, accessories, notebooks, those sorts of things, things that you're going to use straight away pretty much. Um, so when we have a look at uh, Dead Island and Dead Island Riptide, the extra contents that I've described um, they generally fall into the second category, the, the more practical category rather than the collectible category. And um, so these are things in general that you're going to keep, um, uh, you're not going to keep in the original box in perfect condition, all right? You're just going to use them. Um, for example, my Turtle Beach headset, I don't have that anymore, as I mentioned. Um, I also don't have my Dead Island t-shirt as I've worn that out many years ago and disposed of it and 
so with that in mind, with the, those kind of categories, uh, now let's have a look at the Dead Island 2 editions and pre-order bonuses that they have for comparison. So pre-ordering any version will get you the Memories of Benoit pack, which includes four things, the Benoit World Club, uh, Memories of Benoit Baseball Bat, a Weapon Perk, uh, Balanced, whatever that means, our, or um, Personal Space Skills card. Straight up, there's only a single physical PC version of Dead Island 2, which is the Halle edition, although nobody appears to be mentioning it on any of the store pages that I've seen. This will include a code for Epic Game Store. So that's right, the loyal fans of the prior games are getting the shaft. Anybody on GNU Linux who have played the first game and Riptide will not be able to play Dead Island 2. Well, any, well, maybe if they can get it to run under Wine, but there's no official support for it like there was previously. Anybody who wants consistency in their game collection by having all of the games grouped together in the same store, or anybody who wants official Steam Deck support, or any of the other advantages that Steam provides will be completely out of luck. Epic has also seemingly purchased an exclusivity agreement with Steep Silver, so even digital purchases through Steam are not per are not possible. It's not just the physical uh, collections that miss out. So anyway, we'll get to discussing the Hell A edition in a bit. Um, but Dead Island 2 has three physical editions at launch. The first is the Day 1 edition. Um, so that one, it includes no bonuses. It's $99.95 from EB Games, and that's the same price across, across all console platforms, including the PlayStation 4. I have no idea how they justify that, but there it is. Next, we have the Pulp Edition, which includes the Weapon Pack DLC, um, and that consists of the Homewrecker Sledge Hammer and the Eye Opener Pitchfork. Otherwise, it appears identical to the Day One Edition and costs $99 from EB Games. And lastly, we have the Halle edition, and it has a steelbook, an expansion pass, a travel map, six tarot cards, two bin patches, one patch, and pulp weapon, uh, pulp weapons pack DLC. Oh, and it's got the golden weapons pack DLC. So. This edition has sold out at EB Games, but is available elsewhere, such as Amazon, at $149 for consoles or $139 for the PC. It's far from the most expensive collector's, ed uh, collector's edition released recently, but there's barely anything of value included. As far as the two categories of game bonuses, uh, collector bonuses go, the contents are kind of a mixed bag, um, but leaning towards being more pra uh, practical than collectible, despite not actually being practical. <laughs> so, for example, you can add pins to a jacket or a hat until they fall off or end up lost. You can iron the patch to a jacket or a backpack, um, and it will last as for as long as the item it is attached to lasts, and then it will just be disposed of. Uh, the DLC codes are activated one time and then tied to an account, so there's nothing collectible about any of those. And speaking of which, the Golden Weapon Pack sounds like there's not, they're nothing more than in-game skins, I'm imagining, which is fairly pointless for a game, I would think, that supports up to three players. So it's only two people that are ever going to see it, apart from yourself. Assuming you can even see it yourself, no, I guess you can see the weapons, but anyway, um, the map might have practical applications in game, but nothing you won't easily find in an online guide, I'd, I'd expect. So I consider it effectively like a cheaper version of an art book. It's an art piece, I suppose. So maybe you can hang it on your wall, but probably not. Uh, the steel case is a collectible, no doubt, since it has no practical application. And 
the same goes for the six Terriot cards. Uh, there's only six of them anyway. <laughs> um, in reality, if I purchase this edition, all of the stuff will just sit in a box forever and never be used, except for the DLC codes. Now, if the game included something practical and exclusive, like a carry bag or a t-shirt or a soundtrack on the CD, assuming the game has a soundtrack worth listening to, that is, uh, I'd be prepared to pay a bit more for those things and purchase on day one. But we know from decades of experience that buying games at release is more often than not a bad idea, at least financially, because prices go down, sometimes very quickly. But there's other considerations as well, uh, aside from financial reasons. The games come out with bugs that require patching. Um, games come out incomplete. Uh, for example, Dead Island 2 has that season pass. We'll just have to see, wait and see what's included in that. Um, but until that season passes out, the game is effectively incomplete, I suppose. Um, games will typically come to Steam eventually, and by the time it does, the game will be cheaper. And definitive editions that include all prior DLC will likely appear in a few, in a few years, as has been the case with Dead Island 1 and Dead Island Riptide. So, collector editions and pre-order bonuses have to overcome all of these issues to make the game appealing at full price, since prices usually do drop quite fast. Now, I'll say straight up, unless I want a physical version of a game that I truly believe will sell out, I simply won't buy a game on day one or pre-order a game unless the collector edition or pre-order bonus is sufficiently compelling. Otherwise, my game backlog is simply too large at this point to justify the expense. I'm already buying way, buying way too many games that, that meet my collector edition and pre-order requirements. For example, this month there's Grim Grimoire Once More Limited Edition, there's Process of, Elimita Process of Elimination Limited Edition, Fairy Fencer F Reframe Chord Limited Edition, and there's Mugen Souls limited edition from PlayAsia. And I already own literally thousands of games in, in my collection. They're just waiting to be played in my backlog. So now that um, now that earlier point about DLC, that reminds me of some important aspects when it comes to exclusive pre-order DLC bonuses. The DLC can't be insignificant or nobody will care about it. But on the other hand, if it's too substantial, nobody's going to want to buy post the game post-launch because they'll get an inferior experience. Too much of the game has been carved away. So and another thing is that DLC devalues the product in the eyes of the collector since uh, a game is not technically on the disc for not not fully for any game that includes it. Um, at least this can be particularly important to console gamers, I think. Now, as an aside, when I see a game that is exclusive on the Epic Game Store, I can't help but be reminded of Saints Row. This is a game I got for, well, at no cost. I got the code for the game as a, a GPU uh, bundle or a uh, something I got when I purchased my GPU last year it just came bundled with the code for it. And I was initial, initially disappointed to learn that it wasn't a Steam code, as I was originally uh, led to believe, I think. Um, potentially AMD wasn't aware that it wasn't going to be a Steam code either, I'm not sure, at, at the time they originally advertised it. But anyway, despite um, uh, despite my concerns, the, the game ended up being... Uh, quite poor, so poor in fact that some suspect the game to have killed the franchise. So now I, I get indie comp uh, indie companies or indie developers, I should say, uh, I get them wanting to take the epic cash, but when it comes to games that are made or deals that are made, I should say, for AAA titles, I can't help but think 
that the game is going to have serious issues at launch or that a publisher has very low expectations. It, it just doesn't make sense to put it on the Epic Game Store in that situation. So it's definitely not a good sign. At least that's my view of looking at it. And so that does have me a little concerned for Dead Island 2 right out of the gate. So let's recap. Dead Island 2 Collector Editions cost way more than the comparable Collector Editions for the original Dead Island and Dead Island Riptide. And unlike the first two games, the contents are not practical, but not really what a Collector Edition or a Collector would like to see in a Collector Edition either. Like There's no art book, there's no piece to put on display. And thirdly, the PC version is simply, in my view, unacceptable. No Steam support, no GNU Linux support, no Steam Deck support, no Steam trading cards, no achievements, no you know, friend contacts, etc. I, I think it's an insult to the existing fans who played the original games on PC. But you know, maybe all of this is okay because maybe the game has built up a ton of hype and everybody wants to play it on day one no matter what. They don't care about any of these pre-order bonuses and the collector's editions and they just want to play the down game. Maybe. But to maximize the chances of that, you would think they would pick a release date that doesn't coincide with other heavily promoted titles. I'm thinking things like Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores DLC that releases the day before and it only costs 20, uh, $29.95. Or maybe Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp, which are remakes of the games by uh, originally by Intelligent Systems, at least no, uh, the, the new remakes are by way forward, but Intelligent Systems uh, is famous for you know, Fire Emblem games, WarioWare, Paper Mario, and these classic games, uh, or remakes of the classic games, are to be released on the same day. <laughs> so I find that strange. I mean, maybe they're sufficiently niche, but then again, I don't know if Dead Island 2 is also not somewhat niche. I don't know. Time will tell. I predict, however, that with the way that this game has been released, it's not going to sell well at all. And it's a shame because if Deep Silver had simply included, well, at least from, from my point of view, if they had included Steam codes instead of Epic Game Store codes and maybe included the soundtrack on CD in, in the Hell Edition, that is, uh, that would have gotten me over the line. But now... I'm probably going to wait until it's dirt cheap on Xbox or PlayStation 5. Or I'll just forget about it until eventually it shows up in a Humble Bundle or something with a Steam code. But what do you all think? Have you pre-ordered Dead Island 2? Or are you also unhappy with the current offerings? Do you usually buy games on day one or do you usually wait for a sale? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.